I'm William Quigley, co-founder of Tether and Worldwide Asset Exchange. Tether is one-to-one -one digital currency tied to real-world currencies on the blockchain. It's, it's a stable coin, basically, William. So how, how does this decision impact you at all, if at all? Well, simply opening up Bitcoin to a far greater pool of institutional capital, I think that's where all the excitement is coming from. You're talking about funds that collectively control trillions of dollars. So it only takes a small percentage of those funds to be allocated to Bitcoin to cause a huge increase in the price of Bitcoin. And of course, that's what most people want. They, they, they're investing or buying Bitcoin because they want to uh, see it go up. And uh, uh, Bitcoin has already increased in value from its lows of, uh, call it 16,000 in November 2022 to 45,000 today. So it's recovered very well from a tough yeah. 2022. Uh, so I think the ETFs mm -hmm. open up a huge base of potential new institutional capital. Personally, I have lots of questions about how this is going to be done, the mechanics. But uh, it, one thing seems for sure, there are going to be Bitcoin ETFs very soon. What, what do you mean? What, what sort of questions do you have about the mechanics that investors should consider? So many things, you know. Um, Bitcoin uh, will, how will the institutions uh, think about the suitability of this for their clients? There is a massive amount of discretionary capital that these institutions control. Uh, will will uh, the suitability tests, how will they be conducted? Uh, what about margin? You know, you can get 60% margin on a lot of stocks. Uh, is this a marginable asset? Um, in, in exchanges and places where people currently acquire Bitcoin, they're able to access loans using the Bitcoin that they own. Uh, they, can, they can borrow against it. I don't know what uh, a lot of these institutions are going to say. Many of them may just say, we're not going to open this up to anybody but institutionals uh, initially. Uh, but people like Schwab, Robinhood, those types of self-directed mm -hmm. investment platforms, they may say buy and sell as you wish. Uh, then you even have the issue of how are these institutions going to acquire the Bitcoin? Because they do need to hold it one to one. There are only 900 Bitcoin made a day, minted a day, 450 a day uh, after April when the Bitcoin halving takes place. There's only about one point. 8 million Bitcoin freely available to trade on exchanges. Uh, that's about a little less than $100 billion worth of, of Bitcoin. Uh, sure, if the price goes up, maybe you'll have more people wanting to sell. Yeah. But there's a massive amount of Bitcoin that doesn't really move. 80% or so of Bitcoin is held long term. So these are the questions I have about how it's going to behave with, with ETFs.